Now, if you recently bought the Mavic Air 2 Flamer combo, then of course you got the Mavic Air, you got your remote control, you got your bag, you got a couple extra batteries. But then you also got this right here, which is a set of ND filters. Now this set that it does come with has a pretty wide range of ND strength. It goes from ND16 to an ND64, all the way up to an ND256. Now what's interesting about this set is that if you do know about filters in general, you're probably wondering why they came out with such a wide range. And because of this, I kind of call this like a sample pack of filters from DJI, just to give you a little taste of what you can do with it at different strengths, using different filters for different situations. And if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Aldrin Astacio. I do a lot of drone tech tips, tutorials, and product reviews right here on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing and also hitting that bell to be notified when I post new videos. Now I've done a bunch of videos on filters, how to properly dial them in, how to use them for both video as well as photos. Make sure you check that playlist above as well as down below. There's a lot of information on there and I go in a lot more detail in some of those videos. Here what I wanna do is kinda of give you an overview of the filters, why you're gonna need them, also show you how to install them onto the DJI Mavic Air. And if you guys haven't noticed, also the DJI Mavic Mini came out with a recent software update that allows you to have full control over your manual settings in video mode, which now gives you the ability to use different types of filters as well. Now filters in general are really there to help you properly expose your video or your photo depending on what settings you're using and what you're trying to achieve in that video or photo. Now with the Mavic Air 2, you do have a fixed 2.8 aperture, so you're not able to adjust that, but you are able to adjust things like your shutter speed as well as your ISO. Now when it comes to ISO or basically light sensitivity onto the camera sensor, this is something you wanna keep as low as possible because the higher your ISO, the more noise you're gonna introduce into your video or your photo. So you wanna keep that ISO as low as possible. ISO 100 or 200 works really well. You could probably bump this up to 400. So now we're at a fixed 2.8 aperture. ISO we want as low as possible. Now the last thing we have is shutter speed. Now if you're talking about shutter speed, especially when you're talking about cameras in general, if you wanna freeze frame an object, so say you're recording something in sports or anything like that, and you wanna freeze that object, you're gonna want a high shutter speed, basically a one over 500, one over 250, 500, one one thousandth of a second of a shutter speed in order for you to instantly freeze that subject. Now if you have a bunch of still images that are freeze framed in a sequence, it starts to look very, very crisp and choppy all the way through those 30 frames. And that's the reason why you will introduce something like filters onto a fixed aperture camera like the Mavic Air 2, is because you wanna slow that shutter speed down a little more. Now when you start slowing your shutter speed down from something like a 1 500th or 1 1,000th of a second, down to something like 1 60th of a second or 1 30th of a second, you start slowing down that shutter speed and when you slow that shutter speed down now, it introduces a little bit of motion blur in the video. Now how do you determine which strength of filter to use to properly expose your image? A lot of that comes down to what they call the 180 degree shutter rule. So I'm shooting at something like 4K at 30 frames a second, a pretty standard one that you'll probably shoot with a lot on the Mavic Air 2. The 30 frames a second is the more important part. So if you're shooting at 4K at 30 frames a second, you want your shutter speed now to be two times that frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, you wanna bring down that shutter speed to 1 60th of a second. Now, of course, if you don't have any filters and you bring it down to 1 60th of a second and you're out in bright daylight, you're gonna be very overexposed. Even if your ISO is as low as possible, you're gonna be very overexposed and be completely blown out if you don't have filters. So then what you wanna do is pick the right filter that helps you achieve that 1 60th of a second. Now, like I said, the 30 frames a second is the important part. So if you're shooting at 4K at 60, which this thing does, Ideally, you're gonna want your shutter speed to be at 1 1 20th or double that frame rate. 60 frames a second, you want your shutter speed to be at 1 20th. Now, when it comes to something like the ND256, which is super dark, now you're not gonna more than likely use this on a video. This is actually what I would probably use on long exposure photography. Now the reason why you're gonna want something this dark for long exposure photography is that you're gonna want that shutter speed to open up and stay open for a very long time. Now something like an ND256 or even stronger than that, some companies like Freewell and them come out with something like an ND1000. Now the darker you go on your NDs, you're gonna now have to compensate the exposure by opening up your shutter speed for a lot longer. So if you ever wondered how people get that silky or motion in a photo 
or a video, that's really what's happening. It's keeping that shutter speed open for a lot longer. Then it's exposing all of that movement in the water and capturing all that in that photo or video. That gives you a lot of that silky movement in the water. Now I also have a bunch of videos on how to shoot long exposure photography on my channel. Make sure you guys check out that playlist above as well as down below. I'll walk you through step by step on what I'm able to do and how I shoot long exposure photos. Now to install the filters is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is power it down, place it on its back just like that. And the camera itself has a little ring around the front as you can see. Take off that ring, all you have to do is hold the camera with one hand to support it. With your other hand, you just wanna press in on that ring and then turn it counterclockwise. And then once you do that, it'll then pop right out. And there's actually no lens on this piece right here. It's actually just open. It's really just a holder, really. Now, next what you wanna do is pick that filter that helps you get the proper shutter speed. Like I was mentioning earlier, I was shooting at 4K at 60 frames a second, so I dialed my shutter speed down to 1 20th. It was very overexposed. So what you do is you go through the range of filters that you have to ideally get the proper exposure. Push it down and in and twist it back clockwise, and then now you have an ND16 filter right on the front of your camera. Now some of the most common ND strengths I think you're gonna be using for video is normally gonna be around that ND8 to ND16 range when you're talking about a camera like this where it has a fixed aperture. The one thing that's great about something like the Mavic 2 Pro is that you have an adjustable aperture here. So even if you didn't have the proper ND strength, like say I only had an ND16 or ND8 on the Mavic 2 Pro, I'm now able to adjust that aperture on this camera and make those micro adjustments here where on the Mavic Air, you're not able to do that. If you had to dial it in properly with the Mavic Air, you're gonna need to bring your drone back, swap out the filters, put a different one on, a different strength on, put it back up in the air, where something like the Mavic 2 Pro, you can make those micro adjustments by adjusting the aperture. And there it is guys, just a little information about the ND filter set that comes with your Flamer Combo, what they're for, how to install them, why you need them. And like I said, I have a bunch of videos on my channel that talk about filters, how to use them for video and photo on some of these platforms, the Mavic Mini, the Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air 1. As always, if you guys got value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. And also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Aldrin Stasio with flightpath.com. See you guys in the next one. Take care.